Hey y'all, Candon here with DC by Foot, and I'm at the newly refurbished Air and Space Museum on the National Mall that opens to the public next week. I thought I'd take you on a little sneak peek. Over 50% of the exhibits are new, and they are interactive, accessible, there's a focus on women in flight. It's amazing, and I'm really excited to show it to you. One thing you need to check out is the full-size T-70 X-Wing that was used in the filming of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Jackie Cochran was a pioneer in women's aviation. She was the first woman to go supersonic, and in this T-38 in 1961, she held eight speed, altitude, and distant records. You can see her plane on the west end of the museum. Destination Moon explores the moon race of the 1960s and 70s and celebrates the first lunar landing in 1969. Here you'll find artifacts like Michael Collins' in-flight spacesuit. These damaged F1 engines were recovered off the seafloor by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. These are the same Saturn V rockets used to launch the first second and fifth lunar landings. The highlight of the exhibit is the first spacesuit on the moon. This is Neil Armstrong's spacesuit, the one he wore when he made the historic one small step landing on the surface of the moon on July 20th, 1969. Afterwards, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins returned home to Earth on the Columbia, the Apollo 11 command module. This is the only part of the spacecraft from the first moon landing that returned to Earth. The early flight exhibit focuses on the time period between the first flights of the Wright brothers in 1903 and the outbreak of World War I in 1914. Airplanes grew from a dream to a reality. The centerpiece of this exhibit room is the 1909 Wright Military Flyer. It is the world's first military airplane. Wilbur Wright taught the first three American military aviators to fly in this airplane at nearby College Park, Maryland. One of the things that makes this newly renovated museum so great, especially for younger visitors, is how interactive it is. The Exploring the Planets gallery shows us the worlds that circle the sun. There are giant realistic models of the planets and images that show us the landscape of all of the various worlds in our universe the giant volcanoes, the geysers, the canyons. It also features three generations of Mars rovers.
In Nation of Speed, we explore the need for speed. It explores the desire to be fast on air, water, land, and space. On this sonic win, John Stapp became the fastest man on Earth. He went 632 miles in 5 seconds. You'll also see the Pontiac driven by number 43, Richard Petty the King. He won 200 NASCAR races, 7-time Daytona 500 winner. There are two motorcycles that set land speeds 100 years apart. In 1907, Glenn Curtis won 136 miles per hour on a V8. And in 2018, Erin Sills rode her BMW S1000RR to exceed 219 miles per hour. An unexpected and quirky addition to the exhibit room is Gilmore the Flying Lion. He was actually the pet of air racer and aerial showman Colonel Roskell Turner. Turner and Gilmore began flying together in the 1930s. The Ford Trimotor, also known occasionally as the Tin Goose, was the largest civil aircraft in America when it first flew in 1926. The Boeing 247 was the world's first modern airliner. This plane was actually flown by Roscoe Turner, the same one who had the Flying Lion in an earlier exhibit room. The We All Fly exhibit room focuses on the different ways that everyone can fly and all of the different careers in aviation that there are. A highlight of this room is Jerry Mox's 1953 Cessna 180 the spirit of Columbus. She was the first woman to fly solo around the world. The Cirrus SR22 is only from 2003. It's the first single piston engine aircraft with a fully integrated avionics computer screen to be FAA certified. Wilbur and Orville Wright are honored in their own exhibit hall, from their time as printers, to bicycle repairmen, to the original 1903 Wright Flyer. The world's first successful flight of a powered, heavier-than-air flying machine. The two brothers, Wilbur and Orville Wright, began in 1899, and on December 17, 1903, they flew this plane in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, making a 12-second flight, traveling 120 feet. Later in the day, Wilbur at the helm covered 852 feet in 59 seconds. 
So that is a brief highlight of the Air and Space Museum, but there is so much more to see. Our blog tells you all about how to get time tickets to the museum, or you could take a guided tour with us. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more about Washington, D.C. and cities all around the world.